Uh, this sermon will be a continuation of the sermon from last week where we talked about Noah. Noah was righteous. Everybody else was bad. What the Bible says, uh, every inclination of man's heart was evil all the time. Because of that, God brought a fierce flood. The heavens opened up with rain. The, the floodgates beneath of the springs and so forth, they burst open. And the world was flooded and everything that had the breath of life, life in its nostrils died. So Noah and his family, because of this ark, eight souls total, they were saved, and God starts over. So we start this sermon, we have this sermon today, it's called a, a Fresh Start, but we have the same struggle. It comes from Genesis chapter 9, where the Bible says this, it says, Noah, a man of the soil, proceeded to plant a vineyard. When he drank some of its wine, he became drunk and lay uncovered inside his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw his father's nakedness and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Japheth uh, took a garment and laid it across their shoulders. Then they walked in backward and covered their father's nakedness. Their faces turned the other way so that they would not see their father's nakedness. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we, we thank you for this beautiful day you made. and We're most thankful that the struggle of sin of the entire human race, you conquered, you defeated with the blood, the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Thank you for that blessed hope that comes to all who accept and who obey. May your word be presented here so you'll be glorified in this place today. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. So the world starts over with eight souls, and we find this verse, Genesis 9, verse 20, it says, Noah, a man of the soil. Now this is the same Noah who, if you remember back to Genesis chapter 6, the Bible says he was a righteous man, he was blameless among the people of his time, and he walked with who, church? So he was blameless, he was righteous, he walked with God. It's the same Noah who built a boat. It is a really big boat. When you see it Saturday, if you get a go, from the time that you can get a glimpse of it, you're going to be struck by how large that structure is. It's, it's pretty well incredible. Just as the Bible describes it, the ark is 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, 45 feet high. Wait till you see it. Same guy built the boat. The boat was so big, it had a door in it. The Bible says when Noah got on board and the animals got on board, they came two by two, male and female, but actually the clean animals, they were seven by seven, seven males, seven females. They got on the boat, and how did they shut the door? The Bible said the, the Lord shut them in. It's the same Noah. The same Noah who got on the boat, who God shut the door, the rain came. The Bible says, in the 600th year of Noah's life, on the 17th day of the second month, on that day, all the springs of the great deep burst forth, and the floodgates of the heavens were opened. Pop quiz, how long did it rain? Y'all have heard this sermon before. It, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. The Bible says that. Rain fell on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. Chapter 7 of Genesis, verse 12. But it's important you realize it didn't just rain for 40 days and nights. Actually, there was floodwaters over the earth for 150 days. The Bible says the, flood, the waters flooded the earth for 150 days. More than that, it wasn't just 150 days. They stayed on board the ark more than a year. Because the Bible says, Noah's 601st year, by the 27th day of the second month, the earth was completely dry. Then God said to Noah, come out of the ark. So Noah built this huge boat. He and his family were saved. It rained for 40 days, but it flooded for 150. And then he stayed on the ark for more than a year. So I just want you to know that when you go see the ark on uh, Saturday. Uh, that's some of the basics. That's the same Noah. Same Noah we see in uh, Genesis chapter 9. It, he, he had, when he got off the ark, he built an altar, made a sacrifice to God. God put a rainbow in the sky. Same Noah. The Bible says there, God said, I've set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Never again with the waters, uh, with the waters become a flood, will the waters become a flood, to destroy all life. So this is the exact same Noah, blameless, the ark builder, the guy that had the animals on board, that seen the rainbow in the sky. When the Bible says in Genesis 9, verse 20, it is the same Noah. 
Noah was a man of the soil. He proceeded to plant a... Now, I want you to think about this. It wasn't that grapes were just growing out in the wild. It was that he had seeds. And he got off the boat with these seeds, grape seeds. And he planted and uh, maintained a grape seed so that it became a vine and produced grapes. Now, for uh, grapes, grapes just like anything else, they take time before you can harvest, right? And then after you harvest grapes, then you would have to press the juice out. Um, it's great the way they would do it. They would get down in like a depressed area, try to catch all the juice that comes out. They would take off their shoes, presumably try to clean their feet up. And they would get to squashing those grapes with their toes. That's the old way to do it now. Um, so it takes effort. You have to plant the seeds. You have to care for the vine. You have to harvest the grapes. You have to press it out. Now it might surprise you to know that the word in the Hebrew for wine would include fresh grape juice that has not been fermented and grape juice that has been fermented into alcohol. Nonetheless, we know that this, this juice was fermented because uh, he became drunk. If it's fresh squeezed grape juice, you will not get drunk, you just have grape juice. I want you to think Noah, the righteous man, blameless, who walked with God, got off the boat, pretty rainbow in the sky, he plants some grape seeds, he, he maintains the vine, he harvests the grapes, he squeezes the grapes out, he catches it, collects it, gets it in an airtight environment so that it can ferment, and then he proceeds to drink some alcoholic wine. Now, this is more, it says he, he drank some of its wine, he became drunk. Now, I want you to see, this is more, this is more than just blowing a little, little heavy on the breathalyzer. This is get inside your tent and lay drunk and uncovered. Kind of intoxicated. I want you to see he drank. You know what? Uh, homemade wine is not. It's not like it's 120 proof here, folks. You got to drink a lot of that stuff to get in that kind of shape. I want you to see Noah, the man of God, the, the boat builder. And I hope this brings you some comfort today. The Bible tells us it does tell us. Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, He said, be perfect as your heavenly Father is. And to the church, the Apostle Paul would say in the Corinthian letter, 2 Corinthians 13, he said, aim for. So we're striving for it. We're aiming for it. That's what we're trying to be. You put away sin, you do what's right. That's what we're aiming for. But we still fall short. And that falling short is called sin. Now I want you to see, we, we say, well, we stumbled, we made a mistake, and, and so forth. I want you to see, sometimes we plant grapes. Sometimes we maintain the vines, we harvest the grapes, we press out the grape juice, we ferment the grape juice so that it becomes wine, and then we drink too much of it. You see, that's not really an accident when you think about it. I want you to see, we're struggling with, with sin. And when we see the Bible, we see that God uses imperfect people. And if that encourages you, man, do your head like this right here. I mean, when you see the Bible, God uses imperfect people. I don't know. Abraham was old. Uh, Sarah was barren, at least for the first 90 years. Jacob was insecure. Uh, Leah was unattractive. Joseph was falsely accused. Moses stuttered. Um, Gideon was proud. Uh, Samson, uh, Gideon was afraid. Samson was proud. Naomi was a widow. David had an affair. Um, Rahab was a prostitute. You go right down the line, Elijah was suicidal. Jeremiah was depressed. The Samaritan woman had several failed marriages. Uh, Paul, uh, he was maybe too bold. Timothy was timid. Uh, Thomas was a doubter. You go right down the line, God uses imperfect people. And Noah was the boat builder, blameless before God, and stone blind, drunk, and naked in his tent. God uses imperfect people. And I hope that's an encouragement because if he uses imperfect people in the Bible, it means he can use imperfect people here today. Um, not long ago, uh, Stephanie and I were taking a trip. Uh, we were going, actually, we were going to London, Kentucky for a, a youth event there. And I spoke down there one night. But the boys were kind of uh, kind of fighting with each other in the back seat. And I joke, I used to say their, their names were Huey, Dewey, and Louie. And now I say their names are Don't Stop and Quit. Because they were, they were kind of, not real bad, but Stephanie and I were trying to talk, and they were kind of fighting in the back seat, and I really didn't know exactly what was going on. And, 
And Silas, he's in the middle, and Deacon's strapped in his car seat in the back. And anyway, Silas is turned around like this, and, and I just I hear Deacon's kind of making a commotion, and Silas is the only one I can reach because I'm driving. And, and his tail's like up in the air that way, and I just swatted him real gentle but firm, right there on his tail, just straighten up. His feelings were really hurt because at that time, at that specific time, particular moment, uh, he was not doing anything that, that deserved uh, a spanking. <clears throat> And when he was, his feelings were hurt, and he went on, I told him, uh, he went, you shouldn't have done that, Dad. I didn't do it, Dad. And I said, uh, <clears throat> son, here's the way it is. When in doubt, wear them out. <laughs> and that is probably the worst philosophy that a parent could have. And I just want to share that with you because, uh, uh, one, I didn't wear him out. It was just a firm swat on the tail. Um, but I, I want to swear, sometimes you think... Uh, Deacons and elders and preachers, oh, they got it all together. Oh, they're perfect. Oh, if I could be more like the, the leader of the church. Oh, man, we're, we're all struggling with sin. That's what we are. We're all imperfect. We're all great sinners saved by the even greater grace of God. That's what we are, right? And we see in the Bible, God uses imperfect people just like Noah, just like me and you. And that's an encouraging thing. This is, though, a, a fresh start after the flood. All the... All the uh, the wickedness was supposed to have been destroyed in the flood. This is supposed to be a brand new beginning. And it was. But the struggle still there was sin. The Bible goes on to say, it says that Ham, now he was the father of Canaan. That, that might ring a bell for you. Uh, Ham was the father of Canaan. He saw his father's nakedness. And he told his brothers outside. So Noah's in there drunk and naked in the tent. And Ham is one of his sons comes in and sees that. Um... The Bible says, Sham and Japheth, his brothers, they took a garment and they laid it on their shoulders and they walked in backward and covered their father's nakedness. Their faces were turned the other, they, other way so, they, they, so that they would not see their father's nakedness. Now, um, I want you to see, if you're looking for the verse in the Bible that says, Thou shalt not see thy father's nakedness, it's not in there. That is not a command anywhere. But, we do know about God. The Bible says, Be holy because I, the Lord your God, am. So, uh, He's holy and that's who He's called us to be like. We're supposed to be like Him. We do His will in front of our own. We serve Him with all of our hearts. That's the way it's supposed to work. So, you might not be able to find that verse in the Bible that says, Thou shalt not smoke marijuana. It's not in there. You can't find the verse that says, Thou shalt not cheat off thy neighbor's algebra test. It's not in there. Thou shalt not uh, be dishonest on thy company's expense report. It's not in there. There are things that are not in the Bible, but yet you will always have right is right and wrong is wrong. And Ham did what was wrong when he went in and found his brother and evidently checked things out. Ham did what was wrong and his brothers did what was right. We're called to do what's right. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians, we are taking pains to do what is Right. Not only in the eyes of the Lord, but also in the eyes of men. Ephesians 6, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is? If you think that verse is right, say amen. amen. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. This is right. The Bible says, Romans 12, be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. The Bible says, Philippians 4, think about whatever is right. The Bible says, 2 Thessalonians 3, as for you, brothers, never tire of doing what is right. We're called to do what's right. And when we study the Bible, we know what the Bible says. We know enough of what's there between good and evil, right and wrong, that when the Bible doesn't expressly address the topic, we still are going to know what to do. Because the Bible's telling us what's right. Right is always right. When you study this situation, you'll see that uh, Ham did what was wrong. And when Noah woke up, he was told what his, brothers, uh, his sons did. The Bible says, when Noah awoke from his wine and found out what his youngest son had done to him, he said, Cursed be Canaan. The lowest of slaves will he be to his brothers. You know that Ham had a son named Canaan. They settled in what we know of. They're uh, the Canaanites. You know, ten men went into Canaan. Twelve men went into Canaan. Rather, ten were bad, two were good. The Canaanites were there and they were all destroyed in the book of Joshua. So many of them destroyed, you can read that. They were slaves. Noah's sons, they kind of went... Japheth went to the north towards Europe, which is presumably where most Americans came from, descended from Japheth. That's, that's where we came from. The Shemites were Abraham's family, the Jewish people. They went kind of southeast to the Holy Land and to the east. 
The, Ca the Hamites, they went to the south and to, not, Sham went to the west. Um, no, Sham went to the east. Ham went to the west. That's the other direction. Ham went to the west, and if you think about it, that is uh, the land of Egypt, and the land of Africa. And you hear what the Word of God says, uh, he will be slaves to his brothers. You hear that? The Hamites who went to Africa, the Canaanites. You see how God's Word comes true? Ham was cursed for what he did. You see, it's a fresh start, but it's a, it's a brand new day. Same struggle, sin is condemned, doing what's right is honored. And the Bible says to Sham, uh, Noah said, Bless the Lord, the God of Sham. May Canaan be the slave of Sham. See, Sham was blessed. He was blessed so much that a guy named Abram came from Sham. And God said to Abram, I will bless you, and all nations on earth will be blessed through you. In the fullness of time, God brought about what He promised. Despite the fact, the fact that mankind was bent on evil. The Bible says in Genesis 8, uh, after the flood, God said every inclination of man's heart is evil from childhood. But yet, see, God had, when you study the Bible, you see God had a plan from the very beginning. God had a plan that the seed of woman would crush the head of Satan. And that's what God brought to pass. From a descendant of Sham, in the full appointed time, born of a woman, born under law, born to you this day, Luke chapter 2 verse 11, born to you this day in the city of David is a Savior who is Christ the Lord. He came and He conquered this struggle that mankind was in. This seemingly eternal struggle, perpetual, never ending. Jesus brought it to an end because He crushed the head of Satan. He came and set us free. The descendant from Sham, who was blessed, Jesus Christ, He shared in our humanity so that by His death, he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. We've been set free by the sacrifice of the Christ. There's a verse in the book of Psalms. It's Psalm 100 and verse 1. <laughs> Where the Bible says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Woo! We are brought victory. We're set free. He crushed the head of Satan. Satan is harmless. That's why the Bible says in the book of James, Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So we're brought victory by what he did. And God's words are true. And you hear what Noah said to Japheth. Remember all the Europeans, uh, we came, we extended from Japheth. And hear what, God, what Noah, God's word, Noah said to Japheth. Listen, may God extend the territory of Japheth. May Japheth live in the tents of Shem. And you think about that and think about faith. And while we're still here in this building studying this archaic book called the Bible. And we see that uh, in this book... We're studying about a man named Noah and a worldwide flood. And you say, preacher, if we all came, Americans predominantly came from Japheth, how is it that we actually, how is it that we live in the tents of Shan? I was hoping you'd ask that question today. I've got a tent at home, but it's not a, it's not a uh, company. It's not a company made by Sham. Physically, I don't live in uh, Sham's tent. But spiritually, I do. You see, uh, those who obey the gospel of Christ, the Bible says this, you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the... we're heirs according to promise. We, we take God at His word... We are heirs according to the promise and spiritually we dwell in the tents of Sham. We're children of God. We're set free. We're saved from sin. Death has been destroyed. Sin has been overcome. Jesus said in John 16 verse 33, Be of good cheer, take heart. I have overcome the world. 
His grace is sufficient. We're heaven bound, saved, which is what we don't deserve and what we couldn't earn because He's merciful. Woo! This thing's for real, man. We're not believing a fairy tale. Jesus Christ said, Heaven and earth will pass away. My words will never pass away. And they're written in red. And a part has been presented here today. And if you believe that Jesus is the Christ, you've got to obey. Because Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my command.